thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to the conference. Um, what I'm gonna discuss today are um, the tokens of three bridges located uh, in the towns of Cohees, Waterford and Troy, New York. They are, uh, these towns are located very close to each other, uh, about eight miles north of Albany along the Hudson River, which means they're about 160 miles north of New York City, uh, virtually due north on the Hudson River or the Mohawk River. The Mohawk River uh, goes off a bit to the left of the Hudson, and then it eventually becomes uh, the main part of the Erie Canal, which connects uh, the Hudson River with the uh, Lake Erie uh, at Buffalo, which was a big commerce uh, port, a big connection before the railroads in the United States um, in the, uh, constructed in the 1820s. The first of the bridges, the oldest bridge, was the Union Bridge connecting the towns of Waterford and Langsburg, New York. And as you can see, it's a covered wooden bridge. It's a, set, a total of 797 feet in length. And it has four spans with three um, stone piers on the river. The construction on the inside are heavy timbers. Uh, two lanes of traffic and a third lane for pedestrian traffic. Here we have a photograph of one of the portals at the end of the bridge. The toll house is at the left and as you can see the two lanes of traffic. At the bottom of the picture you could also see in the photograph what uh, looks like streetcar uh, tracks. Uh, this is a much later picture uh, taken about uh, 1900 when the bridge was fitted for streetcar traffic. The tokens we have for the bridge, there are uh, four with several varieties. Uh, these are made of uh, pressed fiberboard. Uh, this one is 22 millimeters in diameter. And as you can see, it says the name of the company, Union Bridge Company, Waterford. And it says it's a commutation token for one foot passenger with a value of two cents. Since it, there's no record in any of the uh, newspapers of the day, or I have not found any annual reports of the bridge company, but uh, I feel that all of these tokens in the presentation today even though they have face values at them, which would be the cash fare, uh, they were probably bought in um, quantity and then sold at a discount uh, as a ease of passage or a frequent user type of discount. The catalog numbers I'm using in the presentation, the Atwood Coffee catalog, uh, is the standard reference for United States and Canadian transportation tokens. A later date commutation foot passenger token are these made in vulcanite, which is a hard rubber substance. Uh, and these tokens, as you could see, uh, come in two varieties. Um, easily identifiable by the rosettes uh, that appear on the uh, obverse of the token. There's a hollow rosette and a, a full bodied rosette They're called the solid rosette. Uh, I think that these are actually from the same production mold, but it, there was a difference in the pressure used in the vulcanization process which created the differences with the hollow lettering and rosettes from the solid rosettes. 
our, our next token for the same bridge is a 10 cent token with for a driver and a one horse vehicle, uh, 25 millimeters in size with a value of 10 cents. These come in color varieties, a dark red and a rose. And finally, a 13 cent token, 31 millimeters in size for a two horse vehicle and the driver. Sadly, in July of 1909, uh, the bridge caught fire. And because it was a covered bridge, the wind just drew the fire uh, throughout uh, three of the four spans of the wooden structure. The bridge was eventually rebuilt the following year as a steel uh, arch bridge. Uh, truss bridge, excuse me. And as you can see in the lower postcard, uh, with the comparison of the old and new bridges, the uh, stone arches, the stone pillars, excuse me, uh, for the uh, new bridge were uh, the old bridge pillars. They they're just uh, cleared away all the wooden debris. And as you can see in the top postcard, the toll house uh, is still standing uh, with the canopy over the doorway. However, by this time, uh, the tolls uh, were removed and it became a free bridge. Our second company was organized in 1873 and it was called uh, the Troy and West Troy Bridge Company. And eventually it also got the name of the Congress Street Bridge as it uh, met at the foot of Congress Street in the city of Troy. Their foot passenger tokens don't have a value to them. However, they have two varieties in the style of the lettering, uh, most prominent in the word foot on the reverse. One has extended serifs uh, for the F and the T, whereas the other is a sans serif typeface. These are 23 millimeters black vulcanite. The 25 millimeter uh, vehicle and one horse tokens come in two color varieties, a kind of a red orange and a yellow. Uh, the yellow tokens are not listed, but as you could also see, uh, the tokens have two uh, typeface varieties, especially in the reverse. Uh, mold work. And our final token for uh, this bridge is the two horse vehicles. And uh, this is a 32 millimeter token. Our next and final bridge in the group of three is the Cohees and Langsburg Bridge. The bridge was opened in 1880. I haven't been able to find a photo of the bridge from the time period. It currently has a, a much cornerstone of the bridge still exists and is made into a historical marker it, uh, in the, uh, the town of Troy uh, near the uh, uh, plaza of the current bridge. Uh, again, as a wooden bridge, uh, it sadly uh, was destroyed by fire in March 1920. But what's really nice about the cornerstone is it mentions Thomas Knickerbacker. And we'll talk more about Thomas after we discuss the tokens from this bridge. 
Again, we have two vulcanite varieties of 22 millimeters uh, for uh, the Cohes and, and uh, Langsberg Bridge. A two cent token again for a foot passenger. We have a Rose Vulcanite token of 25 millimeters for the vehicle and one horse. And we have a nice Greed Vulcanite token of 31 millimeters for uh, 13 cents with a two horse vehicle with a driver. Now, how does this all work together? Uh, it turns out that Thomas Knickerbocker owned all three bridges starting in the 1870s. And his family operated the bridges and maintained the bridges as a private concern uh, through the 1920s. And here we have a photo of Thomas uh, as a father of the family. He was president of the bridge company, which controlled all three bridges. And his son was treasurer of the company. And here we have his funeral memorial for the family in Oakwood Cemetery in Troy. And you could see engraved in the granite a uh, motif of the wooden arches from uh, two of the covered bridges, which match our photograph pretty nicely from the beginning. Eventually, as the bridges were rebuilt as steel spans, they became city-owned properties, and uh, that's how they remain today without tolls. So since Thomas comes into the picture in the 1870s, uh, and that's also when Vulcanite was uh, very um, much popular in production. I'm thinking that uh, these tokens were all used in the 1870 to 1890 time period. Uh, if they required a toll after that time period, they probably switched to tickets. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Uh, thank you for your time on this little history trip of Upper New York State transportation. <laughs>